In this video, I'm gonna break down the difference between a training mindset and a performing mindset. Hey there, I'm Eli Straw, mental performance coach and the founder of successstartwithin.com. Now it's very important that you have a clear distinction between a training mindset and a performing mindset because one of the biggest challenges that I see when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with an athlete is that they, they have a performing mindset during training. A lot of times they're not going to have a training mindset during a game or during a performance because you know it's, it's very easy to feel like, okay, now's the time that I need to perform. But a lot of times we do see a performing mindset during training and this can lead to a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and then just overall it can hold you back. So a training mindset, this is a mindset that you have whenever you're practicing and training. And the key characteristic of a training mindset is that you're not out there trying to absolutely perform your best that day. You're only focused on growth and improvement. Now a training mindset is going to be broad but targeted, meaning it's broad in that you're taking a long-term approach to growth as an athlete. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to put this work in each and every day because long-term I know it's going to help me be a better player. But it's targeted because you know that today this is specifically what I'm working on for today's practice or for today's training session. Now with a training mindset, we are going to see a little bit more thought taking place when you're actually training because you can start to use your own internal dialogue and your own self-talk as a way to help train, as kind of a coach for yourself. So we just know right off the bat, a training mindset, it's all about what am I working on today? I'm not trying to be perfect today. I'm not trying to perform for anybody else. I'm just focused on getting better today and then getting better the next time I train and I have this long-term approach to growth as a player. Now, in contrast to that, we have a performing mindset. And a performing mindset, I like to say, is characterized by two words, letting go. You're focused on letting go and just playing, just competing, just being present and focused on each and every moment and trying to perform to the best of your abilities. So this is one where we do start to see that idea of, okay, I need to perform my best come in, but you don't wanna put that kind of pressure on yourself because that can lead to some perfectionism and some anxiety when you perform. With a really great performing mindset, you recognize that you've put the training in, you're able to let go, be present and enjoy the performance. Knowing now the difference between that training and performing mindset, I wanna go into some tips that you can use to develop a better training mindset and then also develop a better performing mindset for yourself as a player. So let's start with a training mindset. The first tip for a training mindset is that you wanna make sure you're setting objectives for practice. Now an objective is gonna give you intent. It's gonna give you a clear idea of what you're working on that day. With your objectives, I encourage you to get as specific as possible, but always make sure that they are controllable. Don't go broad thinking, I want to improve my shooting. If you're a basketball player, you're always going to be wanting to improve your shooting. Think, what do I, what do I specifically want to work on with my shooting? Something Is it something technical? Do I specifically want to focus on a certain shot today? Set that objective so you have a clear idea of what you're wanting to work on. The next tip is that you want to be welcoming of mistakes. Whenever there is a challenge with a training mindset, meaning a training mindset slowly turns into a performing mindset, mistakes are usually at the forefront of the challenge because we start to see mistakes as something negative and we're trying to avoid mistakes during practice. But just as I was talking to an athlete about the other day, practice is a time to allow mistakes. Practice is a time to fail because number one, you're going to get more comfortable with failure, which reduces fear during games and allows you to perform a little bit more confidently and aggressively. But mistakes and failures during practice and training also show you valuable insight into your game and so you can use that to improve moving forward. But you're actually limiting your growth as a player if you're always so fearful of making mistakes during practice. And then the third tip is that you want to learn how to evaluate and move on. And going off of the idea of accepting mistakes, you also want to make sure you're evaluating your mistakes very well. Because you're not going to learn from mistakes if you only forget about them. If you only forget about your mistakes during practice and you don't care about them, that's actually not going to help you improve. We are trying to accept and allow mistakes to happen during practice, not be afraid of them, because we are then evaluating our game, learning the mistakes that we made, and then applying that moving forward. So when you do this evaluation process, it's going to take place after practice or after training. You're going to go back, you're going to evaluate your day, you're going to choose, okay, this is what I need to work on. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take what you need to work on and that's going to then become your objective for the next practice. So we start to see this long-term approach happen where you have a practice, you're very targeted, you have your objectives, but then you evaluate and then you take that, that 
evaluation, you take what you need to work on, you apply it to the next day for your, for your objective, and we see this nice cycle taking place. So those are the three tips for having a better training mindset. Set yourself some objectives, be welcoming of mistakes, and then evaluate and move on. Now let's move on to a performing mindset. So developing a strong performing mindset, what you first wanna do is you wanna identify your optimal emotional state. A performing mindset is very much about this, this mindset, this state that you're in to be able to let go and compete. You don't wanna be trying to overthink your mechanics, maybe like you are in practice. Now you just wanna let it go, go out there and just do your thing for the competition. And to be able to figure out, okay, well, what is that mindset for me? Is it being angry, ready to absolutely dominate the competition? Is it having more of just a relaxed and having fun attitude? Well, to figure that out for yourself, you can go through a process and a practice where you look at your really good games in the past and you think, well, what was my mindset like during those games? And then from those games, you choose that mindset and you start to apply it moving forward. Now, the next tip is that you wanna let go. Have some fun, enjoy yourself out there. And in all reality, the performance is what you've been training for. So you don't wanna put more stress on yourself for the performance. The performance now needs to be the time where you enjoy it. You know, you've done all this work, you've trained really hard, now enjoy it, let go, and have some fun during the competition. And the third tip is to be present. One of the other things that you also wanna let go is you wanna let go of the outcome. Now I know this seems strange because performing mindset has you focused on performing your best. But the thing is, you don't normally perform your best whenever you're so stressed about the outcome and the result. Great performances come from focusing on the process, from letting go of that result, not stressing too much about it, focusing on the process and doing all the little things as best as you can. And in order to do those little things the best you can, you need to be present during the competition. So this is actually where you can start setting some objectives for games, but these objectives are gonna be different than the objectives for practice because these game time objectives are gonna be just you know, pieces and cues that you wanna focus on to help yourself stay present, have your awareness on what you're doing so then you can actually perform your best. One of the simplest ways to help yourself stay more present when you compete is to focus on your breathing. The more you focus on your breathing, the less you're focused on anything else during the competition. Now, once you do identify that op optimal emotional state, like I mentioned in tip number one, you want to think, how can I generate that, that state going forward? Well, one way that you can generate that state is by setting a mental pregame routine for yourself. And so what I've done right here is I've linked another video that goes into creating a pregame routine for yourself as an athlete. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training.